Practicing sitting down helps to relearn loading both legs equally. Demonstrated here is how to distribute weight evenly on both legs and to keep the center of mass over the feet. Follow the principle nose to the toes. Move the upper body forward, reach back with both hands, and sit down fluidly. The pelvis should symmetrically flex as our model sits down. Use two cards to test if weight is evenly distributed on both legs. When the weight is evenly distributed, the therapist cannot pull the piece of paper away while our model is sitting down. When our model is confident enough, he should practice sitting without assist and the therapist can correct as necessary. An adjustment of stance flexion resistance might be necessary by the CPO. In this exercise, the goal is to learn how to bring the body weight on the prostheses with an upright posture, which is one of the requirements for confident walking and secure standing. Avoid hyper-lower doses of the back and keep the prosthetic knee extended. Here the model learns to shift his center of mass over the prosthetic foot. This pattern causes knee and hip extension in terminal stance and is a basic prerequisite for stance release of the knee into swing phase. The therapist guides the weight shift through the entire stance phase if required. Observe how the trunk and the pelvis simultaneously move forward. Once the model is able to do this well, he can practice without support. For initiating stance release, these requirements are needed. First, a good foot rollover behavior, which leads to a knee joint extension moment. And second, hip flexion initiation without hesitation. Kicking a gymnastic ball can help to activate the hip flexors. The model shows how to kick the gymnastic ball with as little power as possible, without circumduction excessive pelvis rotation, or any other deviation of the upper body. Walking with small steps requires a high level of balance. To practice stance release, try to take as many steps as possible while using the least amount of power. And increase the number of steps with proper stance release over a defined distance. Due to his good walking technique, he can move with significantly lower effort in his daily life. Building the trust to put full weight on a flexing knee joint is a fundamental step for handling different situations of everyday life, for example walking downhill. The model feels resistance against knee flexion and lets the knee joint yield as he applies weight and consistently rolls over the foot. In this exercise, our model learns how to slow down using the yielding technique to relieve the contralateral side. When practicing without holding onto the parallel bars, the amount of yielding is determined by his ability to bring the knee into extension. When walking uphill, 
our model makes sure he is initiating swing phase by using the hip flexor muscles. The therapist makes sure he does not circumduct and or use a hip hiking motion. The yielding technique allows our model to walk down most slopes step over step. His upper body stays upright during the entire movement. When walking down a slope, he starts with the prosthetic side first, keeps the residual limb relaxed, allows knee flexion, and rolls over the entire foot. With progress, the therapist reduces support, but can still provide correction as necessary. When our model is confident enough, he should practice going down the ramp without assist, and the therapist can correct as necessary. Change the side of the handrail as confidence increases. The steps should not be too big. Our model might go too fast and would risk to fall. An adjustment of stance flexion resistance might be necessary by the CPO. Presented in these next sequences are the basics for walking downstairs. Three main points are crucial for the correct movement. Placement of the foot, loading of the prostheses, and timing of the knee flexion. Depending on the shoe, either the heel or up to a maximum of half of the foot has to be in contact with the stair. With support at the pelvis, the therapist is able to initiate weight shift, control the direction of the movement, and to correct deviations of the pelvis. A correct downstairs movement is made with an upright posture while the pelvis stays over the foot. Avoid residual limb extension. Start using the contralateral handrail. For new or insecure users, start at the first step and progress as confidence increases. Shown here is one technique for going upstairs. Watch how our model places the prosthetic heel on the step. He keeps the knee extended, loads the prostheses, and then steps down with the contralateral side, which allows knee flexion on the prosthetic side. Correct placement of the foot is a common challenge. The foot can easily slip if placed too far forward. If it is placed too far back, the knee may stay extended, or stance release can be triggered accidentally. Proper foot placement is also important for walking downstairs step over step. Start the training using the contralateral handrail and make sure the upper body stays upright. Use of the ipsilateral handrail increases the intensity of training because the model must load the prosthetic side more. To refine walking techniques, the following exercises can be used and adapted. Shown here is a technique to learn how to walk with an appropriate step length. In this exercise, our model walks around two markers in the form of an eight, which help him learn proper stance release.
with the 3R85 knee, it is possible to securely walk backwards. The therapist shows our model this additional functional possibility. The therapist slightly holds the prosthetic foot down to encourage deflection. The model demonstrates use of the hydraulic stance flexion resistance and in yielding into knee flexion. To activate the lock mode, have the knee extended, push the lock button, and listen for the click. Use carefully. The knee is locked. Stance release cannot be initiated. To disengage the lock, push the unlock button. Carefully verify that the knee is unlocked. To understand the free swing characteristics of the bicycle mode, try first between the parallel bars. To use the bicycle mode, activate only when you are on a bicycle and remember to deactivate before you start walking again. Remember, this is only for riding a bicycle. With the 3R85, kneeling is possible using the hydraulic resistance. The Schoen method is only one example and variations can also be trained.